Hey Reckless, welcome back to another week of our home group. So glad that you are in the room. So glad that you uh, are joining virtually, however you might be viewing this. And uh, man, last week we had a great time at our o October monthly gathering for Reckless. It was so good to be back in the room together. So good to see all you guys that were there that night. Had a lot of fun, got to celebrate baptisms and uh, got a chance just to talk through the gospel and what that means and uh, the incredible opportunity that we have to uh, share that with other people. And so now we're back into our, our normal rhythm. And so as great as our gatherings are for us to, to, to be together in the same room, this is really where life change happens. You guys in your group, in that living room, in that coffee shop, um, surrounded on the computer screen, however you might be viewing this, and surrounded by your leader and other students in that group. And so I'm gonna encourage you during this season as we continue this semester, even as we look ahead to next semester, that we just fully embrace this season that we're in and how we're doing ministry in this season. And so don't just show up at the monthly gatherings, but be committed to being in your group every single week to grow in relationship and spiritually together in that group and uh, just see what God does uh, during this time. And so um, just what we're gonna do this month, just to have a little bit of fun in our groups, is every week we're gonna do something different just to highlight groups and just to um, bless and honor a specific group. And so over the next three weeks, one week we're gonna uh, be able to provide um, some gift cards and, and, and just some fun candy and stuff like that for you guys. One week we're actually gonna have, uh, Spencer's gonna show up and lead worship live for one of your groups uh, there in your house. Um, one week we're gonna have a chance, I'm gonna bring dinner to, you, to one group um, and so we've randomly selected the groups that are going to win each of these weeks. And so I'm just going to let you know now. So tonight, the winner of gift cards and um, I'm bringing some Halloween candy since Halloween is this weekend. Um, the winner of that is going to be Jessica Standridge's group. So you guys are the winners. So I'm going to be by later on tonight to bring that, uh, that stuff to you. So be on the lookout for that. Please don't lock the door and, and close the blinds. Uh, but I'm going to come bring some gift cards for you just to bless and honor your group. And then next week, Spencer, uh, on November the 4th, is going to be showing up and leading worship live in one of the groups. And so we randomly selected that winner, and that is going to be Allie and Lee's group. So that group of, of freshman girls, uh, you guys are going to have the opportunity to, to be able to worship live together with Spencer in the room. So, so be on the lookout for that. And, um, and then on the 11th, on November the 11th, um, I'm going to come bring dinner to one of you guys, one of your groups. And so, again, we randomly selected the winner for that. And Ryan and Pepper, your, your guys' group has won dinner for that night. And so I'll be bringing dinner to you guys during group uh, on that night. And so the other thing I want to mention before we get into worship tonight is uh, this, because Halloween is this weekend, we are also doing a food drive uh, as a church. And so if you want to donate any food, you can go to the grocery store. You guys, as a group, this would be a great way for you guys to serve together. So go to the Walmart, go to the grocery store, buy a bunch of, of non-perishable food, and then you can bring it to uh, the church on Saturday, October the 31st, anywhere from 9 to 1. So you can pull up, have all the, all the groceries in uh, grocery bags. You can pop your trunk. Our team will come and, uh, and grab that out of your car and that's gonna go to bless local food pantries and, and uh, ministries in the area. And just a great chance, especially during this uh, fall season thing with holidays coming up for us to bless a lot of families in our community that need it. And so I hope that you guys will do that individually, as a family, as a small group, and be able to bless people that way. So let's go ahead and get into worship tonight. Um, as Spencer and the team leads us, I'm just gonna challenge you guys to allow this time to be reflective. You may not sing out loud, but just close your eyes, think through the words that we're singing, the lyrics that are being said, and uh, maybe just a chance for you to communicate to God or to have Him speak to you about His goodness, who He is, and, uh, and what that relationship needs to look like. And so just talk to God during this time, reflect the lyrics and what God may be speaking to you about. And then I'll be back in just a few minutes for our teaching for tonight.
took the shackles off my feet And there's no sound louder than a captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord say so Sing of His promises evermore Pour out your thankfulness Let it overflow Let the redeemed It's life worth living Cause he calls me his own There's a hallelujah After sweet victory And there's no sound louder than A captive set free Oh, there's no sound louder than A captive set free All right, Reckless, well, we are beginning a brand new series as part of this video called Counterfeit. And we're gonna be in this series over the next few months trying to decipher what's real from what's fake, what's true from what's fiction. And as we begin, we're gonna just see if uh, you as an individual and your small group can kind of figure out the difference. And so I'm gonna give you just a, a few minutes. We're gonna go give you a, a series of just different pictures and things and see if you guys can determine what's real and what's fake. All right, so how'd you do? Did you get most of them, all of them? With the exception of the last one, we all know that I'm the real Todd Hampton, not Screech. Um, but the other ones are, are, in a lot of ways, are tough to decipher. And it takes you a minute to be able to look because they're so close to being similar. They're so close to being identical that a lot of times it's really difficult to decipher what's real and what's not. 
And I think it's a perfect setup for how our culture is. You and I, we live in a culture every single day where on a daily basis we are presented things as true. Uh, the culture presents to us things that we should believe in, things that we should make our lives about. And on the surface, so many of the things that we are presented as true can appear to be true. And if we're not careful, we can easily be misled by something that is in actuality counterfeit. Now, I believe one of the things that our culture puts at the very top of the list in terms of the things that you and I should chase after, the thing that we should pursue, the thing that we should make our life about more than anything else, you know what it is? I think it's happiness. Right? How often are you and I presented things and told that if we want to be happy, we need to chase after these things? Right? Our culture makes the pursuit of happiness the thing that is more important than almost anything else. So everything that we're presented, advertisements, uh, things that we see on a daily basis, stuff that is presented to us is all with the idea and the perception that if we have these things, our life is going to be happier. So our culture tells us that the thing that we should pursue with our life more than anything else is to pursue happiness. And if you are happy, that is the end goal of your life. If you can die happy, then you have lived. And so every single day, that is something that we are presented as something we should chase after. And so in our pursuit of happiness, we chase after so many different things that we feel like are gonna, we put our hope in, we feel like are gonna lead us to where we wanna get to and lead us to happiness. Now the, the definition of happiness is finding pleasure or delight over a particular thing. Finding pleasure or delight over a particular thing. Now there are so many things that we try to find happiness in. We try to find happiness through relationships, right? If I just had a group of friends that loved me or accepted me, then I would be happy. Or if I just had that guy or that girl that I could be in a dating relationship with, that that boy would pay me attention or that you know, girl would, would spend time with me. And if I just had that dating relationship or one day that marriage, then I'm gonna be happy. We feel like so much of the things that if, if I could just possess this, right? If I could just have the new iPhone 12 that's coming out, man, I'm going to be happy. If I just had the latest and greatest. And so, so much of what we pursue possession-wise is with the idea or the goal of being happy. Or maybe something like money. And if I just made X amount of money, whether now is a, in, in my part-time job that I have as a high schooler or one day as you think about a college or a career choice or what you're gonna do with the rest of your life, I mean, I've, I've gotta make X amount of money. If I were able to make this amount of money, then I'm gonna be happy. Maybe things on social media that we see every single day where we get on it on a daily basis, even not even re realizing that we are pursuing happiness. And so we scroll through Instagram, we scroll through you know, Snapchat or TikTok or these kind of things because we, we feel like we lack happiness and what we need is out there on social media. Or maybe for you seniors, it's your future plans, your college, like what college you're gonna get into. And so through SAT scores and college applications that you're filling out and man, if I can just get into this school, then it's gonna make me happy. If I can just do this with my life, if, I, if the plans that I've had since I was X years old, if these, those plans would just come to pass the way that I want, then I'm gonna be happy. I know it's gonna lead in the direction that I want. But what is something that all of these things that I just mentioned have in common? They're all temporary. They're all dependent on circumstances. And I think that's what our culture doesn't tell us in this chase for happiness and the things that it tells us we should, we should look to for satisfaction, it fails to tell us that these things are temporary and that these things are based on circumstance. 
See, I think one of the things that the last six months has shown us is that things can change quickly, right? The economy or, you know, our safety or our health or relationships or all these things that we feel like we, we have a handle on, how quickly circumstances can change, how quickly things can be taken away from us. And if you and I are trying to find satisfaction in things that are temporary, then we could be in real trouble. And sure enough, that's what's exactly what's taken place in our culture over the last six months. That back in July, it was revealed in the middle of this whole pandemic that we, that we were in, is that American adults are more unhappy than ever before. So get this, only 14% of American adults said that they're happy. 14%. And why is that? Because so many of the things that we try to find happiness in, our economic success, our job situation, um, I mean, even the closeness of relationships that we have, our safety, our health, like, all of those things have kind of been thrown up in the air and been called into question. And it has led to more unhappiness than ever before. In Ecclesiastes, King Solomon talked about this. He talked about his own pursuit of happiness in temporary things and things that the world had to offer. And in chapter two, starting in verse one, and this is the message version, he says, I said to myself, let's go for it. Experiment with pleasure, have a good time. But there was nothing to it, nothing but smoke. What do I think of the fun-filled life? It's insane. My verdict on the pursuit of happiness? Who needs it? With the help of a bottle of wine and all the wisdom I could muster, I tried my level best to penetrate the absurdity of life. I wanted to get a handle on anything useful we mortals might do during the years that we spend on this earth. See, Solomon himself chased after all those things. He pursued all those things that the world was saying was going to lead to happiness. And over and over again, it led to dead end after dead end. And he just said, look, happiness is vain. It is meaningless. There is nothing at the end of the day that all of these things that you're chasing after, it's, it doesn't satisfy. And see, the word happiness is mentioned only about 15 times in the version that I use of the Bible, the, the New Living Translation, the NLT. But the word joy is used over 300 times in the same translation. So could it be that, that God is trying to tell us something about our vain pursuit of happiness? And that rather than pursuing that that's counterfeit, there's something that's much more true and lasting that we should pursue called joy. A few years ago, our church did a series called More Than Happy, and we were talking about pursuing joy. And here's the definition that we gave for joy. We said joy is the ability given by God that enables love, hope, and peace to be believed in and experienced in all circumstances throughout your life. It is a God-given ability, a gift from God that is not based on circumstance, that through all the, the circumstances, through all the things that we experience in life, that joy can be consistent, that we can still have joy no matter what we face in life. And so here's another way that I would say it, is that happiness is dependent on circumstances and is rooted in a temporary perspective. But joy is a choice despite circumstances and is rooted in an eternal perspective. See, joy comes when we see ourselves as God sees us. Joy comes when you and I are rooted and grounded as the foundation of our lives being our relationship with God. Because He's not temporary, He is eternal. And we were created to know and to walk closely with Him. And so when we find that relationship at the center, at the core of who we are, 
then as we continue to walk in that relationship with God, we find that joy goes deep. It roots us. It anchors us. And no matter what circumstance we may face, whether global pandemics or whether pain or suffering or a broken relationship, no matter through all the storms and the tragedies of life, when happiness will easily ebb and flow or come and fade, joy is sustainable. Joy lasts. Joy is not dependent on circumstances. It is dependent on that relationship with the Creator that we were known for. In Psalm 119, 35, David says, Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness or my delight or my joy is found. So is it happiness or is it joy that you seek? And to answer that question, are those things that you are trying to find satisfaction in, are they temporary or are they eternal? Are they things that could easily change based on circumstance? Or is it something much more significant that is not hindered, not dependent on circumstance? And so my challenge is that you not get caught into believing something counterfeit but rather you pursue after something that is real. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart so lead me in your love to those around me Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say he's worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
I am right now joined by my good friend Brian Spencer. So a lot of you guys may see this pretty face and know him from Reckless, seen him around on a Sunday morning. Um, Brian's one of those guys, he's been a, a small group leader for what, last three years or so? Yeah, I think it started in uh, 2017. Okay. Yeah. So, so his, his guys are seniors in high school now. Yeah. Um, if you guys don't know anything about uh, Brian, that he was born blind. And um, so his dog is right down here on the floor, probably snoring during this video. So Brian, just start off like talk for, for students that may not know you, have never heard your story. Just kind of walk them through just your journey with blindness and what that has looked like and um, just your experience with that. Yeah, so um, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a, a history, I was, born with a con I was born blind, like Todd said, uh, with a condition called optic nerve hypoplasia. And for those of you who aren't doctors, Basically what that means is there's a short from the brain to the eye um, because optic nerve hypoplasia, if you're not familiar, is about a one in a million uh, eye disease and I didn't have any hereditary background uh, with vision problems. So this was a very unique case for me. Um, so blindness as a child was, was a bit lonely. Um, and what I mean by that is I wanted friendships uh, in the worst way, 
but I didn't know how to uh, how to obtain them. And I think one of the huge reasons for that was that um, I didn't know how to explain blindness. So I almost became angry and frustrated when somebody asked me, are you blind? Well, yeah. So I couldn't Google optic nerve hypoplasia and maybe get a better explanation of it and nor could the person asking. So that led to a, a lot of loneliness and a lack of, uh, of friendships. Um, as far as God goes in, in my journey of blindness, the truth is, is I never even thought about God when it came to blindness. So I wasn't angry with God about it. I mean, I wasn't, I sure wasn't thankful for it. Um, but I really had no, really no thoughts of God even, um, whether in anger or uh, thankfulness. All right, so when you were in high school, um, there's some things that changed for you uh, in terms of your journey and, and that kind of thing. Just talk about what high school was like for you. Yeah, so one of the biggest reasons I got into Reckless and into high school ministry is because my life truly changed in so many directions in high school. Um, I know high school could be a really tough uh, place with, with meanness and, and things like that, but for me it was actually great. However, it didn't start out that way because, again, I still craved friendships. Um, I was a very lonely person. Well, I had a couple of guys um, who are still two of my best friends to date who saw potential in me, and they uh, they really started working with me. So, one of the ways in which um, I believe God really brought me friends and brought me a, a, a lot of stuff in high school was through cross country. So I ran cross country uh, for four years in, in high school. You may ask, how did that happen? My answer is not very well. And I remember my sophomore year, uh, one of the guys asked me, he said, uh, if you died tonight, do you know where you would go? <laughs> I was obviously perplexed by that question. And I said, no, I really don't care. And he said, okay, he said, do you believe in God at all? Well, I'm in the South, I knew he did, so I lied to him and I said, well, yeah, I, I do. When again, God was not on my radar at all. Um, and nothing, nothing truly happened at, in a faith journey the rest of sophomore year. Yes, I got to hang out with, my, with those guys and, and, and be around them and know who they were sophomore year. Um, but nothing really happened in my faith journey. But fast forward to my junior year, that's where the Lord really brought a lot to me. My friends really started sharing their faith with me. I know we've, I know we've been talking about that the past few weeks, friends uh, sharing, faith with our, sharing faith with our friends and family. Well, um, there was a September afternoon after a cross country race, uh, the other guy that was a part of my life really uh, laid out the gospel for me for about two hours. Absolutely thought I was going to uh, come to faith in Jesus. In March of my junior year, again, it was, this was after track practice, um, this guy again poured out his heart and shared his faith. And I knew that it was, uh, it was time to accept who Jesus, who Jesus is. And how do you choose to find joy in the midst of your daily life, um, even not being able to have physical sight. Yeah. Well, um, let me also, let's do confession time as, as well. One of my biggest things about uh, being blind is the inability to drive. Um, you know, driving is freedom. When I think about my own faith journey, I, I have to look back on what God has done. Because here's the thing. If I had been able to drive, there's an entire possibility that I may not have come to faith. And here's how come, here's how come I say this. Because one of, the, one of the biggest reasons my friend was able to share his faith with me is because I asked him if he'd give me rides home from cross country practice. So we would sit in his truck and, and, and discuss um, the gospel. And if I was driving myself, 
I, I would never have heard that. So um, that's one thing. And I think about some of the friends that I probably would not have had uh, if I was if I was not blind. And I think about the, the Romans uh, 828 passage that uh, God works all things for the all things together for the good of those who of those who love him um, so and I really believe the Lord has has worked that part out for my good if you're struggling with finding happiness if, if you're a follower of Jesus I want to encourage you to maybe look back on what God has done in your life and think of maybe if you were not in this situation um, how would your life be different? Uh, because that's how God is, is doing that. Um, so, but for those of you who may not be a follower of Jesus, I would encourage you to put situations that are going on now or maybe in the past in the back of your mind. Because if and when you become a follower of Jesus, it will be a, it will be a story of how even God, how God has even provided for you. Um, and how you can look back on, uh, on the good that God has done.